Hello everyone, I'm Santiago Santiago and today I'm gonna be testing Need for Speed Heat on the GTX 750 Ti. To skip to any of the resolutions tested, check the timestamps down in the description. So first I'll show you 1080p with the overclock on the GTX 750 Ti, then on 900p and 720p there's no overclock in place so you can see how the card runs on the stock settings. Overall my recommendation here is to play at 720p, 1080p lowest settings can drop below 30 frames per second pretty often, 900p can do so as well but you can remedy that by overclocking the GPU. Still, the game looks pretty bad on low settings, so what I would do in this case is play at, as I said, at 720p, crank up the settings a little higher than low, so you get overall better visuals and still stay over 30 frames per second. Just for the sake of it, I tried 720p lowest settings as well to see if we can get close to 60 frames per second, but the game can easily drop into the 40s when there's action on the screen. So in the options menu, we have the usual options of the Frostbite engine games, but this time around, I like that they separated their reflection quality from the post-process quality. On the Battlefield games especially, this is bundled with the post-process option, so we can change the reflections separately. First of all, to improve performance, I'll lower in groups the lighting, shadows, reflections, post-process quality, effects detail and ambient occlusion. If lowering those isn't enough, lower terrain quality and vegetation detail a little bit. There was more trees and vegetation in comparison to other Need for Speed games, so it will definitely affect performance as well. Then on the GPU side, it seems that it runs better on AMD GPUs, like the Battlefield games. Although it's DirectX 11 only, there's no DX12 or Vulkan option. In comparison to the previous game, Need for Speed Payback, I don't see the graphics being a huge improvement, but there's a bigger performance hit. I usually run into lower performance when we were in the middle of the city with a good amount of cards on screen, plus some effects, usually when colliding with other vehicles or dynamic objects of the city. All that combined with vegetation was usually pretty bad. That's why I show you the very start of the game, it combines all those things pretty well and I can run it over and over, getting the same things happening each time. Pretty good for comparing GPUs. On the CPU side of things, I don't have the best news. While on the Nvidia cards, a quad-core CPU was enough to maintain 60 frames per second, with some stutters every once in a while. On the AMD GPUs, I noticed lower GPU usage, so I needed a stronger CPU to maintain 60 frames more consistently on the AMD card. So yeah, a modern quad-core CPU is enough for 60 unless you have an AMD GPU. On that one, expect some extra stutters. And then if you want no stutters whatsoever, get a 6 core i5 or Ryzen 5. And also the game didn't seem to go past 8 gigs of system RAM usage. So as long as you have 8 gigs on dual channel, it should be just fine. But yeah guys, that's about it. I hope you keep enjoying the video. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Eyes up. We're heading downtown. Expect trouble. Hey, we've got company on the right. Coming up on the back. Let's see what they got. I think I know this cop. Aw, oh, cute. I'm serious. He's bad news. We scored big on this one. There's some prime hunting here. He's not quitting, Anna. Neither are we. Yeah? Speak for yourself. I'm out. What the hell? Richie! Richie! Did he seriously just bail? Gotta go my side, heading north to the city. Be advised. We've sealed off the north exit. Roadblock ahead of you! Take a right! Army deployed, South 
What's the tea, Richie? There's some real speed in this race, Anna. We knew they were gonna bring it. This is the league we're going for here. Come on, guys. This is ours. Don't 